<clears throat> Welcome in. Episode 210 of the podcast. A little fireside chat with Kevin and myself tonight, and probably Drake. We pulled a fast one on Drake. Uh, usually it's Drake and I that are sitting there. Hey, we're going to record it this time. And then it, that time hits, and it's like, Kev, where you at? And then he shows up like two minutes later. But for, the, for those two minutes, we think, eh, hey, we'll just start it. I would just start it up. And we have multiple times. This time, Drake's on the other end of that, um, which sparked a conversation. <clears throat> uh, and don't take this the wrong way. But would listenership go up or down if Drake disappeared? disappeared. Mysterious. Good word. We're not exactly saying that he was murdered. Right. He just not here anymore. There would just be a mysterious absence. Kevin mentioned yeah, that. That's a good question. Do you, do you think do you think it goes up or down? Well, I think that a lot of people, people that there's, there, there's people that love Drake, mm-hmm. and there's people that will not listen because of Drake. Right. And I'm I'm more than aware of that. I've seen all the message boards, the tweets, the you know, the whole nine yards on Drake. And I don't know if the constituents of the party that hates him and literally refuses. I've had people contact us and say, like, I mean, multiple times, like it's it's almost petty. I've had people be like, hey, uh, was Drake on that episode? I'd like to listen to it, but I can't stand Drake. <laughs> or... <laughs> or uh, or like, hey, if you guys ever, if Drake is ever no longer on the podcast, let me know, and I'm and I'll I'll resubscribe, and I'm just like, guy, hey, first of all, I'm not out here just being your servant. Like I don't serve you grapes, dude. I'm not gonna remember that. And I I know as well that second of all. Only we can talk shit about like that to Drake. You can't. That's that's our guy. Only we can do that. Right. Like he comes to me and says like, like, like I'm in on it. Like, oh yeah, dude, I'm working on getting him out of here. I'll let you know. You know? <laughs> like what the hell? And then of course, like you said, there's the people who, I mean, and I, and I, that I'm, tune in. yeah, I'm not going to be shy Just, about it. Uh, to hear it right. Yeah, I'm not going to be shy about it. I think a lot of the growth and a lot of the popularity and the flavor of the podcast is in large part to Drake because he is an absolute loose cannon. <clears throat> so I don't know what side is bigger. And I, like to, and, I, and, I, and I like to think that I can sometimes, you know, balance it out on the other side, bring the calm, level head to the conversation. Yeah, I believe I believe so too. But then I'm not here. But then I, then I'm not here 52 of the time. So you know, is, it, it's 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 just really swung off the hinges here. Right. Um, I like to think of you, your role in any situation that we're in, as when Charlie busts open the back of the, the van and he goes, "Wild car, <laughs> baby," because <laughs> I cut the brakes. Wild car. Why'd you cut the brakes? Wild card, bitches. <laughs> uh, one, of, uh, one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that show, so I've been been working on building a little little home bar in the basement. Okay. You know, I, I, I was talking with, with, with the girlfriend. It's like, you know, because I saw like uh, this ad on Instagram. It's like, oh, you can make like your own bar sign. So you can name your bar. She, she's like, you know what you should name a bar? Patty's Pub. What's the name of the bar in uh, Always Sunny? I'm like, Patty's Pub. You should do uh, that. I'm like, you're absolutely, I should do that. <laughs> I definitely should. Dude, that's so a good So I'm going to go buy a padded pub sign. That's, an, that's a good idea. Um, yeah. yeah, so we don't know where Drake is. Again, 12 minutes late, no text. And he's the one who was like, I'll see you there. Like, you know, and you guys know he's never, he's never like this. So uh, how long before we get worried? Yeah, we'll see. 
I, I think it, yeah, at least a couple days before we get worried. Right? Yeah, with with Drake, I really you know him going off on like a walkabout to find himself in a spiritual sense. That wouldn't surprise me you know, at any at any you point. You know, what, you know, you know what's the most likely explanation is that he just smashed his phone because it was pissing him off or something. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, yeah. He might have taken some vitamins and passed out too, but um, that's also a likely scenario because everyone knows that vitamins make you sleepy. Yeah. Yep. And so we're gonna go on without him, and hopefully he joins um, tonight. Several topics on the agenda, uh, mainly, well, two topics really: um, Iowa basketball and things that have to do with that and then Iowa football and things to have that have to do with that. And guess what? I just explained mm, the show. Hey, guess what? I just explained to you the show that you guys listen to for over 200 episodes now. So I'm hopefully you guys are happy with that. Um, <laughs> start, start with Iowa basketball right before I got on here. Um, I saw that Luca Garza, we all know that he launched his own NFT some of you may have heard of it. Some of you may have bid on it. Some of you still don't have any idea what an NFT is. I still don't understand how I understand, but I personally don't see value. I, in... I understand what it is. I have no idea if we're spending so much money on it. I, it, it. It confuses me a little bit. Um, and like, the, the, the comparison is, oh, it's just like a, it's like a trading card, right? And yes, but it's a trading card that like anyone can also have for free. Right. The only now there's more to it. Like there, some NFTs come with like extra, you know, you win them in a, uh, you know, a dra- uh, like a drawing or something, whatever you win a, a, a bid or you win a drawing and it comes with other stuff like Lucas came with, you know, you get to eat dinner with him. You get to play one on one with him, whatever. But the NFT part of it is like it's like art or a card or you know lucas was like a a live action card that like had a bunch of stuff of him on on there it's like cool but like the ones that aren't live action they're just pictures like i understand you have the you know the serial number the online like code that it's yours but i can just screen i I can take a screenshot of it right and then I also have that picture. Right. And now, like... and, and I, can, I can look at that picture as, uh, as often as you can. Exactly. And it's the same picture. Um, and I know that it's deeper than that. Regardless, Luca just launched his own NFT company. Like... Really? Specifically to enable profits off of, like specifically enabling like kids who are now in states that allow the NIL to profit off of their own NFTs. I'm going to go back down and find it so that, uh, and, and I'm going to read you the description of the website. Why is it being, okay. Yeah, it's actually not, not a terrible idea. It isn't right. Like it's, you know, it's, uh, I think the, you site... know, our NF- NFTs in, in general, a silly thing. I think so, but yes. people are paying money for them. So why not capitalize off? Right. The, the market decides the value. If there's dumb people out there willing to buy a picture online, sell your pictures, you know? You the, it, right? <clears throat> the Luca Garza NFT group is a groundbreaking non-fungible token marketplace with a mission to help college artists, athletes, musicians, and students to monetize their name, image, and likeness with simple and scalable solutions u- utilizing NFTs, endorsement packages, and other NIL remedies, which heretofore... And I didn't know that was a word. Hey, we combine three great words. Word, we we combine great, three great words. Word. Here to four, which is basically Spanish to me. And I've lost where I am because that word pisses me off. Have only <laughs> been available to professional status. Uh, beginning with college athletics, the Luca Garza NFT group is addressing the recent modernization of state laws and proposed NIL, um, reform 
with a multi-billion dollar college sports industry, uh, giving athletes to make money from their NIL and reform a multi-billion dollar sports industry with a team consisting of blockchain development experts behind NBA Top Shot, NCAA's Board of Governors, world-renowned artists, and executive leaders. The Luca Garza NFT group is well-positioned to give the power of NIL back to college students while maintaining the collegiate model. This results in a source of income for college students as their fans support them and develop deeper relationships through engagement with unique NFT drops made in caliber. <laughs> Cal made in Calib. Oh my goodness. Made in collaboration with each student. There's Good more. Time. But like, so Luca's going to be rich, you know? And yeah, I mean, it's a good idea. I mean, who knows how longer, much longer this NFT thing goes. And if, I mean, if it becomes a huge thing, then yeah, I mean, it's good. You know, who cares if you make the NBA, right? Hey, I mean, people, people <laughs> thought Bitcoin was fucking stupid in 2012, too. And, and, and they thought it was stupid. And they, they, people still think it's stupid. And they woke up to, but a lot of them woke up, up this morning and still think it's stupid. You're right. But hey, it's, it's, you know, it's gaining more and more validity um, and realism. So, yeah, I mean, he's going to make a bunch of money, and we should have thought of that, and that's about it. Um, I want to – That is it, yeah. Yeah. CJ Frederick, and this is old news by now. Many people covered this. All the, you know, all the other Hawkeye podcasts that you guys listen to out there, they all talked about this, and they talked about it in more – um, I guess, for, you know, from the standpoint that they talk about college sports and the Hawks in general, they talked about it with that kind of flair to it. Um, but then his uncle was, you know, Gre they named him like Greece. I don't know if you've seen any of this, Kev, but like. <laughs> they I, I've not seen, I saw your tweet about his uncle, but I have no idea what his uncle said. Okay. So long story short, um, uh, Frederick decides that he is going to enter the portal. Yes. And I imagine, and there's probably a lot that I'm not informed on, but I imagine that, um, you know, people are nuts on those fucking message boards. And like, you know, they do like, yes, the, they, the, they, they do the work of the FBI and finding like, you know, posts from three months ago and all this different stuff. So, a bunch of people, obviously mad that CJ's leaving, immediately jump to, oh, there's tampering going on, which very well may be the case. Um, and so they go back and they realize that, um, well, first of all, the Iowa compliance office tweets out like a day later <laughs> this super petty tweet that's obviously directed right at the Frederick situation and says all 2021 athletes must, must, uh, or all 21, 2021 athletes that are entering their names in the transfer portal must refrain from communication with other schools until they are officially in the portal. <laughs> and I was like, Oh geez. I was like, Oh God. And so <laughs> not only that, but like the release statement, um, like that the Iowa basketball Twitter account put out was very short. It was almost, it, there was like no love in it. Right. Like, like a lot of those are. Um, and so Which is even weirder for a team that has like 15 guys, you know? Right. So people are like, okay, clearly the team and Fran and like, you know, the staff and, and everybody involved at the U aren't happy either like and they weren't expecting this so something's going on right and so obviously you know that's a little disrespectful to cj but if they you know if the university wants to be petty they can be petty um and so then his uncle who i believe the family cj is from kentucky the state of kentucky um there are pictures of family members and maybe even CJ like taking pictures during the recruiting process in high school with um, coach Calipari and, and, you know, and so they go back and they find like, Oh no. So Joe's uh, uncle comes out or CJ's uncle comes out. His name's Joe and posts a Facebook message. That's like, um, 
CJ never talked to anybody. Like just kind of this this long post that was like talking about it made it seem like he was CJ's dad and that like he or or CJ's agent. And he was like speaking for CJ, said that he talked to the team and like um like made sure that Fran knew where the rumors of him transferring were coming from or like the the, the rumors of tampering and all this stuff. And it was like, dude, why are you a part of this? Like um Right, yeah, you I made it much more suspicious that you're actually saying something right way now. Way more suspicious, dude. And so then the trolls of the earth that that you know peruse the the boards of online go back and find a they find a, a post on the Kentucky basketball message boards from CJ's uncle, the same guy who posted the Facebook thing. Um, after one of Kentucky's basketball games, they're all like pissed off. You know, they're, you know, if, if you're, first of all, now I'm going to offend people here. Now don't just everybody listening, just big, deep breath because I might offend a couple of you. Okay. If you are a regular poster on a message board where you know, I'm not even going to go into more detail. If you regularly post, if a message board is – actually, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm not going to say anything. You lose – I think you already said it, dude. Yeah, I think you already said it. You lose a couple respect points from me if you put a whole lot of stock into talking about your favorite college or football or whatever, if you live on a message board, basically. I'm sure you're great people. You just lose like two out of a hundred Madden points, Madden rating points for me. Um, Is this because they say many things about you on there? Is that why? Oh, no. And I'm sure those who are on there will be like, oh, he's pit. Like, I could, I could not care less. I mean, I could not care less. Um, I just think, like, hey, you got better stuff to do, man. (laughs) And it, it only creates like anger and, you know, like everybody on, not everybody, again, ge- generalizing, but like a lot of people on those message boards, they think they know better. They know better than the coaches. They know better than the players. They know better than the the training staff, the AD. I mean, it just goes on and on. There are some good topics and fun ways to communicate in on a message board, but a lot of it is just garbage, trash, toxic, toxicity. It's, it's all it is. Um, they find a message that his uncle put up in the Kentucky basketball message boards that said, help, don't worry, help is coming. This was in the middle of March. So when they're still playing, correct. Correct. That's that's pukey. So, So now it's like, oh, that doesn't look good. Uncle Joe. And so now everyone's okay. So now, this is when it goes to Twitter. Everybody's calling him greasy Uncle Joe. I mean, like, <laughs> and it's incredible. It's incredible. And so, you know, I don't know anything else behind the story. All I know is that CJ is not going to be on the Hawkeyes basketball team. A lot of people are salty about it. And his uncle is an asshole. I, that's basically. I could have just, you know, said the whole story in those three statements. But um, how about that, huh? Like, interesting. Yeah, that's a, what do you think yeah. about the tampering? Like, what, like, with the transfer portal now being open to a one year, tra- like, you can transfer, right? There is no sit rule. You're never, you're like, you, you now have to, you now have to recruit high school and other teams. Because that's yeah, what, literally. <laughs> like, it's that's what it's going to yeah. be. You, you're going to have to have, especially like, if you don't respect, especially if they don't like uphold and respect the rules that, <clears throat> yeah, you have to be in the transfer portal. Right. Everyone's basically always a free agent, man. Free agency, man. And you know, like, you could finish up a game you just lost to a team. It's like, hey, number four, good game. Let me talk to you real quick. And then, Funny enough, a few weeks later, like that dude's (laughs) so dude's. Yep, John Miller and Mark Morehouse on their most recent podcast. Um, there's actually a quote funny enough from John Calipari 
saying something when he was asked in an interview about the transfer portal. This was a while back. And he said he was like talking about how it's a bad thing or whatever. He was against it or against the new rules and how if things keep advancing the way they are, he's going to have to start handing out business cards in the handshake line. I mean, it's <laughs> literally what he said. And guess what? He got us, man. He got us. Damn. Um, yes, he did. CJ was obviously – a significant part of the Iowa basketball team scoring wise. I don't think he put up that much. I think he scored like five a game or six a game maybe. Um, but he, he hit, was hit or miss. Like, right. Like he was either feeling it or it wasn't. And he, and he had injuries and um, you know, it, and so the question be- begs is, is like, was he unhappy I don't know. I mean, he was, he was a featured guy, kind of. He was going to be even more featured next year uh, with Luca. Yeah, like if Luis can't leave, if, if Luis can't leave, was, then he would have been like probably it, the go-to it, scorer. It was going to be, it was going to be him and Keegan Murray. Like that, it would have been right, him. Yeah. It was going to, it's going to be him and Keegan Murray show. That's what it would have been next year. Um, So playing time, like, or opportunity probably wasn't it speculation that it could have been like hey did they not like how his injuries w- were handled probably not i don't know um i don't know interesting situation yeah but and then um why am i drawing a blank on our backup center's name like luca lee's and he's also transferring yeah um why wow can i, not think I can't think of it either now i'm pissed dude and i know his name and i know his yeah. name but I can't think of it. Um, dude, we look so bad right now. So bad. Are we, we even just came after uh, a very disappointing season that we felt like we underperformed in and we're losing guys left and right. Oh, I, I, you know, it was really exciting going into Iowa basketball this year. I can't say I'm going to be very excited going into Iowa basketball next year, but who knows? Hopefully they'll prove me wrong. One of the questions was, uh, I I just quickly shot out, hey, we were podcasting. And um, someone said, what's what's the ceiling for a Fran coach team? Is it really the round of 32? And I think that's like a funny way to like ask that question. Obviously, there's a little bit of spite in there, just like a 1% spite level to that. Um. I think the ceiling was final four legitimately this year. I really do. Um, Um, Yeah. I mean, they got, they got stuck in the bad bracket with Gonzaga. I don't know if they would have been able to get through that buzzsaw, but right. Like just cause Illinois lost to, but but, but, I mean, Loyola, Loyola doesn't mean that that Illinois team when they played great, wouldn't have been able to compete with anybody. Right. Like the ceiling isn't necessarily where you land, you know? No, I think Iowa's best game this this year could have matched up with anybody on the court, but uh-huh. yep. they did not find that best game as often as you would like a high caliber team to. Correct. Does that makes sense. Yes. And I don't know if I don't know if the ceiling is like what is your ma- you know, like you play your best perfect game, is that your ceiling or is your ceiling actually something that you can hit more consistently because if we're talking about that then you know, maybe it was elite eight. It was definitely elite eight. Um, but I don't, I don't know. Um, good news is, is Jordan Bohannon has maxed out his retirement plans. And, uh, because of that, he has nothing else to do. Um, so he's coming back for his 18th season and that's good news. How many years did he actually, like we we got there in 2013. Did he get there a year after us, or is it two years after us? No, he got there in. Uh, he got there in 20. Oh, I'm gonna pull it up. I believe he got there in actually like 2016. I think it was 2016 was his first year. Um, uh, okay. I, I thought it was 2015. Imagine him being like, in college for 10 years, and he just keeps finding ways to, <laughs> to just. Dude, can you imagine how legendary that'd be? Insane. That. So, 
Yep. No, his yeah. first year, his first year was 2016. Um, and he was an all big 10 freshman honoree. I mean, he literally was, I mean, he was in the mix freshman year. And so he's played in 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And now he's going to play in 21. Um, I mean, and one of those, like, some of those years he was obviously, um, hurt or one of the years he was hurt, yeah. but yeah. Um, and I, I said it on the, I did the, uh, the roster series podcast where I go over the, the four guys having fun, having a lot of fun with that Patreon. Love you guys. The support, the feedback. I said it today. I was like, I would have played for as long as they let me, I, you know, like as long as you're in, you're willing to stay in, man. I mean, once you're out. Yeah. I'm, you don't I, think I so? think I would have stayed around quite I would have stayed around quite a while too, but at some point you gotta be like, All right, well, um you know, life's good now. <laughs> but the sky checks don't exactly right help me yeah long term. This is true. And eventually I gotta start making some fucking money. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. Uh I don't know. Like, I, I definitely would have taken one more year for sure. Yeah. Yep. And then probably would have taken another year. But after that, like, say, like, your class is gone. The class beneath you is gone. The class beneath you, that class is gone. <laughs> then you're just like, dude. Like, what am I doing? Like, am I a coach? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm older than the fucking GAs. What am I doing here? Like, what's going on? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, I think, uh, and so, and Jordan's talked a little bit about, the decision to come back. He says he, he attributed, attributed. Oh my God. I, I can't speak. Okay. I can't. And I'm a podcaster. So that's a problem. He attributes it to several things. He felt like last year just didn't feel right. Like the right way to end the career with nobody in the, in the stands um, during COVID. I can, get, I can understand. That. And, sure. and I totally get that. Right. Like if, if our senior year would have yeah. been in front of, nobody that in front of been, our yeah that would have, you know and especially like and it's a it's a very small part of of the entire experience but your senior year like that's your year to lead the team out in the swarm right like there's a lot of special things that go along with that and not yeah i know and so i get that um his one his one thing holding him back was he didn't want to he did not want to impinge on the career development of Joe Toussaint. Obviously, Joe Toussaint is the expected or was the backup to Jordan Bohannon playing the one um, of the five positions. Jordan was the one the last couple of years, and he's been a facilitator, right? Which a point guard usually is. The point guard, the one, is not usually your highest scorer. Um, he's kind of what makes the offense click, right? And Joe is, he's flashed and he's shown a lot of signs that he's ready to take that spot and really grow into it. And so Jordan didn't want to impinge on that. Jordan says that now, and it's, it's interesting that he actually gets this deep into kind of the philosophy of what they're going to look like next year. He said that now he'll be the two. He'll actually be a combo guard. He'll run off the ball. He'll run off screens. He'll, he'll shoot more. Um, Obviously he's one of the best shooters in Iowa history. And so Joe and him will be playing on the floor at the same time, which is really exciting. Um, and we're going to need it because I think now, uh, and I should mention uh, more Hawkeye basketball news. I don't know if you saw this or not, Kev. We got a, uh, a guy from North Dakota. So uh, 6'9 or 6'10, he plays the five, and he'll probably be our starter. So his name's Philip Robracha. He'll be a starter. Jabo will start at two. Toussaint will start at the one. And then Keegan at the four and Connor or Patrick at the three. Yeah, probably, probably Connor. Probably Connor just because uh, of experience, but I, I, but don't let him shoot the ball, please. Yeah. He just, yeah. And he's, and, and I was him in high school. Just, sh you know, every once in a while he puts one down. You know, you're a good basketball player, right? You're a good shooter, but you're not a good shooter when you have Bohannon and other guys that are better shooters. Like, 
it's just not you're not the guy um right yeah take the take the easy ones but don't yeah yeah don't, don't get too crazy i am interested to see patrick mccaffrey's development if that kid could add a little bit of girth to him you know he mm-hmm. he could be dangerous he, he, he saw some flashes being keep being a potentially really good player right so you know i think they'll be all right I really do. Are they going to be as good as this year's team? Are they going to be ranked in the top 10 all year? No, they're not. But I think that, you know, Iowa made it to the round of 32. Shit, I think this team could still make it. it the, the tournament is so wonky. You guys saw it this year. It was crazy. Yeah. There's 11 yeah. seeds, 12 seeds in the in the Elite Eight. Iowa could has enough to, when they get to the tournament next year, assuming they make it, um, they have enough to make that kind of run too like they're not just dead out of talent right and so it'll be interesting to watch yeah now drake still not here and i don't think he's showing up and oh but we do know he's alive oh he texted us fell asleep vitamins got to him so see for those who out there chose option c yep He's not dead, which um, lessens the mystery to the story. But that option's always on the table with him um, for multiple reasons. I want to get into quickly before we end the podcast, the NFL draft, which I forgot about. Uh, I believe you reminded me of that uh, today. This week, boys. It is this week. Now, you and I, uh, during the draft in our year, um, well, it looked like every other year. It didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't, uh, you know, I would have loved to rent out um, the subway on the corner of Benton and have a draft party there. But that really wasn't the in subway, the cards. Huh? Not, not the punch. Or the Ponch, or this, or, or Zio Janos. I would have taken any of those. The 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 Dairy Queen on Riverside. I would have rented that out. Oh, if you could like rent out their, uh, you know what I would rent out? I would have rented out Dane's Dairy. And, Dane's like, Dairy, up, uh, dude, that would be perfect. And uh, yeah, exactly. Like, put out like, like a drive through or oh, drive up theater. Yeah, that would have been Type lit. Thing projector, and we was eating a hell of ice cream. We were not on that level. But there are several guys who are probably going to hear their name called, and I'm going to talk briefly about them and where I think they match up in the NFL, where they might go in the draft. Again, I'm not a draft expert or um, analyzer. I played with a couple of these guys. We did, and we've seen them play, and we know a little bit about football. I'm just going to go down the list. Uh, Some of the more popular ones, obviously. Alaric Jackson, Chauncey Golston, Davian Nixon, Amir Smith-Marset, and Brandon Smith. So five um, that either will or m- have a good chance of hearing their name called. Um, who do you think gets drafted first? Um, Other names are you know- Nick Neiman, Mackay Sargent, Sean Byer, um, Koi Kronk and Keith Duncan. I don't see any of those guys getting drafted. I don't think so either. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think a couple of them get picked up. Yeah. I think like uh, Mackay Sargent and Nick Neiman get picked up on free agency. Mm-hmm. Keith will get into Maybe a camp. Koi Kronk as well. Keith will, will kick for somebody for a little bit. Yep. Yeah, there's been a lot of hype of sneaks into a rookie mini camp and who knows. Yeah. I mean, there's been some articles written on buyer that like, Hey, he's an Iowa tight end. He knows how to block. He wasn't, you know, he took advantage of the very limited opportunities that he was given at Iowa. Um, you know, like, Hey, maybe he, he's, we know it. buyers athletic. Like he could go and do it if he's given the chance. I, I have no doubt. Um, yeah, I could see it as being a possibility. It's um, it's an uphill battle, but it's possible. I think Davian obviously gets drafted first. That was a dumb question. I forgot about him. Um, I mean, he was in Mel Kuyper's top ten at one point. I don't right. know if 
what the adjust, where his adjusted stocks at these days, but we'll see. I believe his draft stock fell a little bit, and I don't know why. I think it was maybe because of the numbers he ran or I think something. He had a pretty pretty rough throw day. Yeah. Regardless, numbers don't really correlate with production. And at the end of the day, is yeah, you got to turn on the film, see what the guy can do on a football field. And Davian Nixon can produce on a football field. He he's sure got, can. he's got, he's got the type of movement that big guys do not have very often. Yep. Exactly. Chauncey, another D lineman. He's an interesting one. He's going to be on the edge. I don't know. I, he's probably, you know, they, they probably give him the grade of the five to seven round guy. I really think that all of the other guys, Alaric, Chauncey, Amir, and Brandon all fit into this. They got to get a team to just fall in love with them and, and make them their steal of the draft. And then I, I think Chauncey would be a steal after the fourth after the fourth round i think he can go as he can go late third early fourth round i think he's a really good player yeah he's got a great attitude and he could make a a team especially especially a four three team very happy yeah i don't i don't know how he'd fit in in the three four scheme i don't either i what's interesting about chauncey is i really do feel like he's untapped a little bit i think he's got a a lot of a lot of room to still grow and not physically, maybe a little bit physically, but I, I think that his skill set and, and his ability to play on the defense, it, it's like it's not even there yet, you know? So he's an interesting situation. How about the two receivers? Do either of them get drafted and, and how high potentially? I, I think I think we haven't had a receiver drafted since... Marvin McNutt. Jeez. I'm pretty sure that's correct. And that was 2010. So 11 it, or 12. Maybe 11 or 12. It's it's been a decade, man. That's a hot um, minute, boys. Um I I think at least one we get reacted to. Absolutely. Um Brandon's just just a great athlete and got pretty damn good hands. Good frame, like Here's he, why I like you, you go to your, your, your Madden make a player, you go to <laughs> yep. the wide receiver. He looks like Brandon Smith. You max out all of the categories and he, it churns out Brandon Smith. And you break the category for rippedness and it's like you go past the Under Armour model to even more ripped than that. Yeah. To Super Serum from the Marvel comics. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, uh, I think yeah, the big. I think they both end up getting drafted. I think they do too, and here's why. Uh, and this is my very non-professional analysis. I think that both of them were underutilized for their potential in our offense. Now, ISM, he got to see a little bit of what he was capable of on the top end in several games. Most notably that USC bowl game, um, he was featured and he absolutely dominated. He and Brandon were both, Brandon was definitely underutilized, right? Like we're just not a passing offense. We're not going to be throwing the ball 50, 60 times a game unless we're playing Northwestern with a lead. Where he wasn't underutilized was in the red zone. Like we threw him a lot of jump balls and he came down with a lot of them. NFL teams see that. Correct. And they see that, they know that, if he has that kind of talent, he can probably do other things. And so I think, I think both of those guys are on, you know, on day three teams are going to be looking to, Oh, I hope he falls to me. I hope they fall. He falls to us because we might be able to get a little diamond in the rough there. Um, yeah. Except for the Cowboys. The Cowboys are not thinking that. The Cowboys are not <laughs> thinking that. And that is as far as we're going to take that one for now maybe we'll tell that story when all is said and done with the draft uh but yeah the cowboy so for those out there the cowboys are not going to draft as amir smith marset i'll bet my life on it <laughs> <laughs> um that's about it man i mean drake fell asleep which is really disrespectful to you guys 
and if he had Twitter, I'd tell you to blast him, but he doesn't have Twitter. It's hacked and he and whoever hacked him is just trying to sell fake Ray Bans. Um so that's what if that is Drake? Maybe Drake is actually just trying to sell fake Ray Bans. And that wouldn't surprise me either. But it just seems like a, a little bit of a waste of his time and you know, with how he usually spends his time. So I don't know. That's my thoughts on the draft. We talked about Luca Garza starting his own NFT company. J Bo's back. Greasy Uncle Joe and CJ are probably on their way to Kentucky. And I mean, Saturday. Hey, it's Thursday when you're listening to this. Saturday, baby. Last spring practice of the of this season. It's open. I'm gonna be there. Kevin will not be. But I'm excited. Find out who's having the crawfish boil? Yep, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if the crawfish boil is happening. I'm sure it is. It's probably Shooter running that ordeal. And um, one of the, you know, wh- where would you say the last day of spring ball that that day after slash evening ranked each year on days of the year, best days of the year? Um, it was any big win we had that year, and then that day. And then that day. Yeah, I agree. I agree. God, that the night, the night of our, of our pro day, which was kind of around the same time was a similar kind of day to that day. Um, Sure. And I'll never forget that. What a fantastic night. What a fantastic night indeed. Well, that's it. I mean, you don't get the animation when it's just Kevin and I. Uh, I'll be honest. Kevin had a long day. He, he said before we got on the on the pod, I rarely have long days, but being busy is good. And I am for the next couple of weeks very busy. Uh, the the you know the personal training people are interested. The the warm weather must be getting people a little antsy. They want some some workouts to do and. Business is time to get that beach bod going. Beach bod. Okay. Yeah. I thought I heard G spot, but hey, either one, man. Get that going too, man. Let's go. Get the beach bod going. Get the G spot going. Everything, man. Everything. So that was the Kevin and Tyler show. I think we've only gotten to do like four of these. And honestly, they're great. So. I will see some of you guys Saturday and then we are going to recap. uh, We're going to recap that day and the draft as probably our Monday episode next week. And then we have a very special guest for next Thursday. Kev, are you excited about that guest? All time legend. Legend of the program. Legend of the program and legendary walk on. And everybody's head just went to Dallas Clark, and it's not Dallas Clark. Sorry to disappoint, but it's another legendary walk-on. We'll save Dallas for 300. That's it. That's it. Kevin and Tyler, episode 210, on our way to 2010, um, which was a good year, by the way. Sophomore season. Um, That's it. 210, we're out. Peace.